So you have a balance. Part of the day, you're depending on yourself. Part of the day, you're looking forward to somebody providing extra support for you. And, and so this is sort of a, a new picture of what we have to look for if we want to create uh, as a woman to be attractive to a man and to be attracted to the man. Because so many women say to me in their 40s and 50s and they're single, I just can't find the right guy, you know? I, I yeah. have nice guys, you know? And, but I just, they don't do it for me. They don't do it for me. That's because her hormones, her estrogen levels are too low. And that's because she's too much on her male side. And being on your male side means you're making testosterone throughout the day. You're working for money, produces testosterone. And unless you're just happy and relaxed and love everything you do in the work world, you're not going to be making enough estrogen. You're going to be making primarily testosterone. At the end of the day, you don't have much testosterone either. You used it up, but you don't have much estrogen either. So the key for women is to have things in her life where she is experiencing high levels of estrogen. Now, there's many ways to do this. Uh, when you're, if you have a, let's say you have a doctor's appointment where you're dependent on them for information, support that you cannot give yourself, right? that, that produces estrogen. Anytime you're in a, a relationship, a meaningful, so a doctor, it's meaningful because it's your life in danger. Okay? A yoga class, for example, is different from the way yoga used to be taught. You know, I learned yoga from India. It was mainly for men and you did it alone and you did it as exercise. Women today have taken it on because they're on their male side, but they do it in a very feminine way where they have a leader who guides you. Somebody's there the whole time looking at you. You do it with a whole group of women. You don't do it solitary. You do it to beautiful music. So now it becomes this balance of, of yin and yang, a balance of masculine and feminine helps you to come back to your female side. Even aerobics class, anything where women do together helps them to produce either progesterone or estrogen. Estrogen is produced the more you depend on someone's guidance and help. Uh, now, certainly the biggest estrogen producer there is, is having sex. And this is a big obstacle for women, uh, various degrees for different women, but still that's the culture. I mean, this is what we come from, which is horrible. It didn't used to be that way. Go back further. If I, you go into the uh, jungles of the Amazon where I've been, uh, women are very sexual, you know, they have sex every night with, with their partners, you know, this is a big, big deal where women are sensual and beautiful and seductive. And this is what, and today women are dressing that way. They're giving themselves permission to be that way. But still, when it comes to sex is, oh, no, nope, here's a big estrogen producer it is not just have sex with anybody. But when a man is interested in you, particularly more interested in you, let yourself begin to explore sexuality. See, this is, there's nothing that stimulates estrogen more than having a man stimulate you to higher levels of pleasure. Your body goes, I depend on that. The problem for women today, one of the big obstacles and challenges is the vibrator, you know, and, and which is on one level good because it's given women permission to be sexual, but not permission to be sexual with a man without all those mm -hmm. requirements. You don't put requirements on your vibrator. You just go to business with it. What happens with the vibrator is very similar to males when they have porn. And men don't understand this either. Any man, we're seeing this now in the younger generation, at 21, some males are impotent. They can't wow. keep it up. This is happening, it's a phenomenon that's happening now, which is they can't keep it up or stay interested in a woman sexually, sometimes the first or second time, and then it's over. Because what happens is the pornography, because it's fantasy, produces higher levels of dopamine and testosterone than a real woman ever can. And when you have higher levels of stimulation, your body adapts to that so that you require higher levels of stimulation to feel arousal. So normal stimulation, human stimulation, can't produce that much stimulation. So you don't feel aroused. So you desensitize yourself to normal relationships. And this is what's happening today in the younger generation. Same thing happens with males with pornography is what happens with women when they use vibrators. The vibrator will produce more stimulation than a human can. It overstimulates the dopamine levels and the estrogen and the testosterone all get overstimulated as opposed to normally stimulated, which it takes more time. There has to be more dynamics. There's an energetic field that connects. There's hormones that are balancing. All of that's not happening with a vibrator. You're not getting any real young male energy in the experience to help you feel more feminine. So you're doing it yourself. Once again, you're going solo. But the whole key with this 
is you have sex only because you want to have sex, not because a man's wanting sex with you. And ideally, quite often what happens with women who are more on their male side, which is a natural thing, by the way, as you get older. As you get older, women naturally go more to their male side, but their happiness is dependent on staying on their female side as their uh, masculine self-responsibility increases. Okay, so it's a natural thing for us to age and become more whole within ourselves. So women start out being way more female hormones, then their male hormones become more and their female hormones become less, but then the right balance in the ideal setting. For men, you see so many men when they get older, they wanna retire. That's because their female energy becomes greater than their male energy. It's a natural thing as wisdom grows in men to become more feminine. Wisdom is femininity, wisdom. So men are moving towards greater wisdom, more femininity, but if they don't hold on to their masculinity, they die early. And that's what you see these guys who want to retire. Men should never retire. They should always work. They will shift gears to doing jobs which are more fulfilling for them. Because a younger man can just do the, the worst work as long as it makes money. Because right. testosterone is sacrifice. You know, oh, I'm, I'll give up everything now to get what I'm going to get in the future. But as wisdom grows, you want to be happy in the moment. So retirement for a man should really be <clears throat> taking your gifts and talents and doing it, still working in a more meaningful way, but not so much dependent on the money because you do whatever it takes to make the money. Hopefully by that time, you don't do whatever it takes to make the money. You do something that you love, which contributes, maybe doesn't make as much money, but has a bigger impact. So that's the, the journey for men. As they go, uh, as they mature, their female energy, which wants to enjoy, which wants to love, which wants to relax, wants to have fun, wants to have other people support you, that energy increases. His male side needs to still be strong. And for men, that's about sex. All these men at 40 and 50 are losing their drive for sex because their estrogen levels are higher than their testosterone. And there's obstacles that we have that are beyond our control in a sense, which is because the Foods we eat today have pesticides. Pesticides uh, are registered in the body as estrogen. And the meats we eat, often they add hormones to the meats. So the body hears that as estrogens. This is called xenoestrogens, estrogens that come from outside rather than generated inside. When estrogens come into the body for a man, it sends a signal to the brain to lower testosterone. That's what it does. And so estrogen lowers testosterone in men and they lose their libidos, their motivation, their ability to <clears throat> enjoy sex when you're with a woman. If you're with a fantasy woman, you can still enjoy sex. That's why there's this huge addiction to online porn because a fantasy woman has, doesn't generate any estrogen in you. So if I love my wife, that makes estrogen. And if I don't have strong testosterone, I love her, we're content, but we're not having sex. The interest in sex the interest in connection is not there. But a woman online, there's no estrogen being produced because I don't care about her. I want a different woman every day. That's the internet porn, the whole what goes on. That will produce a lot of testosterone. Sex produces testosterone, but no estrogen. So then he can become aroused. Estrogen lowers testosterone. They have to balance like this. So men have to give up the porn stuff. And then the other thing they have to give up, if they want to have what I teach men, I teach whole classes on this for men. I have books on this, but uh, conscious men, I talk about that. Which John, is I have to say the women here are cheering that you're teaching men because one of the pieces of feedback I get so often is, are men actually learning this stuff too, or is it just us? And so I'm just saying, you've got a whole chorus of women I know right now cheering that you're teaching men. I didn't mean to yes. interrupt. No, no, always interrupt me. Yeah, we, we want men have to be educated. We're being seduced by the porn online and all of that stuff. It just weakens us. And I don't want to sound like some purist, but now we're going to go into something that you have to understand the right context. When men masturbate, just like when men masturbate, each time they lose their capacity to build up testosterone. Is that this is something, there's another class I teach for men is even how to orgasm with a woman without ejaculating. This is the magic. This is when you're talking your 60s and 70s, 80s and 90s and 100s where you're wanting to have sex every day. This is like a, a reality in, in, in cultures where men are taught how to have orgasm, orgasmic experience without ejaculating. What happens is the ideal. 
And the ideal is that the man never disconnects from the woman. See, and this is what women have to understand when we're, hormones are out of balance. As men, what happens is their testosterone levels will drop. They'll, they'll see a woman, they're attracted to her, they'll start to go up and she'll have sex, he'll have sex, and then he ejaculates, his testosterone levels will begin to drop. When they drop, he has to pull away in order to rebuild the testosterone. Detachment increases testosterone. Connection increases estrogen. So estrogen is connection. This is what's vital to women. Testosterone detachment is vital to men. But wholeness is now more vital. So when men connect with women, we go inside of a woman in sex. Our estrogen levels will start to go up. Also, our testosterone will go up, and we climax with a peak of estrogen, which is why women love a man's orgasm, because he surrenders in that moment. And often women, who I, when I'm teaching couples how to have sex without ejaculation, usually the men are like cool about it because men want to last for an hour, you know? I mean, right. an hour, you feel like Superman, you know? I mean, I can do 10 hours, you know, but just like, which is an amazing, I did it once just because I wanted to see if I could do it. But it, after that, I said, okay, I've done that. Hours is happy for me. It's a good, a good connection is an hour. But men are like average, you know, two, two three minutes, you know, 60 right. seconds, you know? and uh, maybe a stud, maybe 10 minutes or something. But even then, what will happen is the man surrenders in sex, the estrogen goes up, then he has to rebuild his testosterone. So he pulls away after a while, he pulls back. And when he pulls back, women will tend to feel a, a need to go after him, which is your big mistake. And I talk about that in Minute from Mars, how men will tend to get close and then pull away. It's all hormonal. The great thing about learning to have sex without ejaculating is men get close and they never pull away. You know, they're just always, they have their distance, which is testosterone stays up and their estrogen is there in balance. And that's something that men can learn. It's also what women can learn. And it's hard for women to teach men that. That's the problem there. It takes a man to teach them. But women can teach them other things. For example, a woman should, ideally, a man should not penetrate a woman until she's had her first one or two orgasms. Now, those orgasms are not necessarily as big as a bigger orgasm, but to have a man uh, come inside of a woman who's not orgasmic, well, what will happen for him is he will connect, his estrogen will go up, he'll pull away further, and she will have not achieved her orgasm. You have to realize, for a man, he gives his juice, okay? He gives himself to her, and if what comes back isn't an orgasm, uh, he will feel even more empty and pull away more and his mind will stray to be looking for that payback. You know, I, I gave, I need to get back. And so my, in my book, Beyond Mars and Venus, I don't teach in that book because it was too advanced. And, and, and my book, Mars, Venus in the Bedroom, it was just too advanced at that time. But what I taught is that women should always have orgasm before men ejaculate. That's a really important thing. If men ejaculate without a woman having an orgasm, there's a sense of, oh, it didn't work. You know, mm -hmm. she didn't, you know, it's like, I'm going to, it wasn't, drive a, it wasn't successful, wasn't successful. And over time, men lose interest. Now, I'm not against women not always having an orgasm. It's just that men have to be taught, which is what I do in the book, is that women don't always have to have an orgasm to be fulfilled. So that's like an important thing, because sometimes women are fulfilled, but they didn't have an orgasm. But generally speaking, if you can have an orgasm before penetration, the woman has an orgasm before penetration, that's always going to be the best thing. Then when he penetrates, she can go to the next level of orgasm and the next level of orgasm because women are designed to have many, many levels of orgasm. If we look back to history, I'll just say this another interesting thing. Uh, you know, the, in the Middle East, for example, they, they would take off a woman's clitoris so that women could not be so sexual because women used to be so sexual. Sex was a big part of life. And then we have the whole Victorian age suppressing sex again, you know, controlling women, pushing them down, saying you can't be sexual, whatever, because men were threatened. And a lot of people in history, they say, oh, men were threatened because women could make babies from other men. And that's certainly a possibility and a truth. But another big truth of it is that women are sexually superior to men in their capacity to experience pleasure. You know, a woman saying, continue, continue, continue. <laughs> And the guy ejaculates, he's got nothing. So, you know, she needs higher and higher levels of, of simulation to hit her high levels. 
and a man just he doesn't know how to do it he can't provide it so he feels like he's a failure he doesn't want to be a failure so he lessens a woman's ability to enjoy sex and that's women have to rekindle that power that they have of sexuality to be orgasmic and for men to not let a man penetrate unless you've had an orgasm because that's the big payoff for a man anyway is stimulation before and then to become orgasmic uh, if you if you allow him if he learns how to lat hold if he learns how to go in waves the whole idea is that he needs to get excited and then he gets close to orgasm and then she has to slow it down and then he gets excited and then you slow it down and it what happens is he builds up his ability to have a bigger and better orgasm uh, with a little extra training of the muscles down there for men he can learn to actually have orgasm without ejaculating and have 10 orgasms okay or as many as you want it's, it, the energy just doesn't stop every day all you want you're, you're like that guy who fell in love with you and you're on your first honeymoon or your first dates where you spend all the time having sex you know this is what we want to rekindle this is how we stay younger and healthier but that's a that's a road that's training along the way the first step with all of that is to come back to finding your own ability to be happy i'll take it back into the first step here mm -hmm. is happy within your femininity and know that you as a woman are a sexual being and estrogen is primarily dependent upon having orgasms you want to be able to have that whole range of going up to the high levels of estrogen production because your body's not going to be making as much estrogen as you get older but with sex it can start doing that and a lot of women are dry and it's so sort of painful down there then they can have sex which doesn't penetrate uh, also there's um, treatments you can do in the vagina as your estrogen levels start to drop too low it becomes dry and the skin is more sensitive sex is painful then you're not going to be able to benefit from sex to produce your estrogen because it starts out too low so what you can do there is uh one of the things on my website besides uh, uh rx for women which is chinese herbs which help restore hormonal balance that has done a lot for women there's also an application you can do with a, a form of aloe vera. And there's a video where I explain to women how to use it. It's a very powerful form of aloe vera. You know, when you get a sunburn, aloe vera yep. is soothing and it regenerates the skin. Well, you can put the aloe vera in the vagina for three weeks every night with an applicator, a new applicator each time, because you want the bacteria to increase. So new applicator uh, each time for three weeks and it all gets rejuvenated. And suddenly it's not it's not painful the skin gets thicker it's just literally a healing of that area without having to take estrogen to rebuild that area you actually just give a soothing natural thing called aloe vera uh, and I have a video on that as well and then you do it like once a week uh, the keep to keep it there until you're having lots of sex lots of sex will keep your hormones in balance there's nothing more powerful to the whole regeneration of the body, the balance of the body than sex. And we have this whole culture which has repressed women, try to hold women down because actually women are superior to men when it comes to sex. It, you know, a man has to really learn his power to keep it up with a woman, to satisfy her fully. Because if she goes into the orgasmic state, she'll go one level to another level level. The estrogen levels will come higher. Then next day she can go over to testosterone land, be completely superwoman, and then come back and relax because she anticipates being able to hit that goal again or to achieve that high estrogen. Here's the interesting thing for women to know. If you've got this, you're very independent, you're on your own, you're making your money, you're doing your job, all that stuff, you're kind of stressed. But if you anticipate coming home to a romantic relationship, a sexual relationship, which will raise your estrogen and it's pleasing, enjoyable. Estrogen's always pleasing and enjoyable, okay? So that's estrogen. If you anticipate, oh, after I finish work, I'll be able to come home and do that, your estrogen levels will stay high during the day. That's the magic of anticipation. If I anticipate getting a check for a million dollars, I'm happy right now. Even though the check's coming in 30 days, you're, already right. feeling, you're feeling like a millionaire. When a woman anticipates an estrogen-stimulating activity, right away her body will start making that estrogen. If a man anticipates a testosterone stimulating activity, then right away his body will start making testosterone. So what keeps us young and healthy and vital is the anticipation of those things that will stimulate those hormones. And there's nothing that will stimulate a man's testosterone than having sex with a woman who is orgasmic. And there's nothing that a woman 
you know, will stimulate more te estrogen for a woman than being with a man who can bring her to orgasm. And mm. that's one of the most powerful ways that we can come back to balance.